So the uh, professional development piece involves the ongoing participation of every member. And so when we say ongoing, what we mean is from the time you begin your uh, registration with the college to the time you end your registration with the college, you would be engaging in this part of the QA program. And so for the time being, the requirements are such that every member uh, engages in uh, self-assessment activities and then professional development activities. And, and that's what we're going to spend our time talking about today is, is exactly what that looks like. All right, so we're gonna jump right into the tools. Um, so as you can see here, uh, these are the three professional development tools uh, that you will be using. Uh, the self-assessment, it just captures a snapshot of your current knowledge, skill, and judgment. Um, it is connected to your learning plan, so um, this will actually, the learning plan is used to help map out any future professional development that you may have um, in the form of goals. Um, and this, these goals can be created, um, I guess, based off your own self-assessment that you had previously conducted. Um, and then from there, you will use the learning record to track your participation in learning activities um, throughout your two-year cycle. Um, I'm just going to go into the criteria piece, um, and this is kind of what is the basic criteria during a review. So each year, a portion of members are randomly selected for a PD review. Um, and it's basically to assure the public that members are engaging in the QA program, uh, to ensure the members are completing tools in accordance with instructions, basic criteria, um, as you can see here on the slide. Uh, the self-assessment, there are two sections to complete. The first is the inventory of uh, your familiarity of basic regulatory requirements. The second section involves a reflection on a particular practice matter. And uh, at this time, when you're going through your self-assessment, you may find some areas where your knowledge or practice could be enhanced. And this is actually a really good thing. There's no judgment um, from the CRPO. This is what the tool is intended uh, to do uh, to help you understand the basic needs to know the regulation. Uh, from there, uh, you can use the self-assessment to help guide you um, into your learning plan on what you decide to put into your learning plan as your goals. So you may want to brush up on some details of being a regulated professional. You can list that here as a goal. Um, you actually don't have to link your self-assessment with your learning plan. You can really put in any goals that are meaningful to you and that are related uh, to the practice of psychotherapy. Um, in the final tool, the learning record, um, this is the tool where you're going to be demonstrating uh, your 40 hours of learning activities uh, over every two years. And as you can see here, um, it needs to include at least one didactic and one experiential um, activity within that 40-hour component. The learning activities um, we have listed here are relevant, credible, and verifiable. And you may be asking, what does that mean? So relevant, that it's relevant to the practice of the profession. Credible, so that there's reason to believe that the learning opportunity exists, um, that a member could participate in as described or inferred based on the format. And, you know, verifiable, so that it can be confirmed or um, that you participate in the learning activity.
another common question we get is, what's the difference between a didactic and experiential learning activity?